the spirit wandered about the room. He could hear the floor creaking. Did that mean it was a real ghost or a real fake? The ghost reached out and touched a lady on the head, shook an officer's hand. The host lit a candle and the crowd gasped. The ghostly monk was holding a dagger. And then the medium produced an abort. The arrival of an object from the other side. A golden cloth flew above their heads. Roses damp with dew fluttered to the ground. A glass shattered. And then the chairs began to vibrate, creaking, knocking, shaking. Rattling, moving. Was it the spirits communicating? Or was it because they were straining to see? At the top were the words, The Life and Love Story of Mabel and Sidney. <coughs> it was written by my great grandmother Mabel. When she was 87, Mabel, my grandfather's mother, the very keen spiritualist. Mabel does not tell the facts of her life. Instead, she tells of her spiritual experiences and of her deep, enduring love for Sydney. Who had she written it for? Mabel was born in 1880. Sydney in 1877. Their story is ordinary, unremarkable, except that it was the story lived by many, the story of the time. Mabel and Sydney lived in Peckham, and they met as teenagers at the Band of Hope Sunday School, where they sang temperance hymns. Mabel writes, we were parted when I moved from the district. I was 13 then, but I couldn't forget him, and I wouldn't have anyone else. I decided I would never marry. At 13, Mabel was apprenticed to a milliner in Harvey Nichols, Knightsbridge. She lived in the attics above the shop with the other girls, but the conditions were austere. They had a cup of weak tea for breakfast, a slice of bread, the cheapest margarine, and it was watery stew for supper. The dormitories had no heating, they were freezing, and they were lit by a small gas jet high up on the wall. But the girls were ingenious. They climbed up onto a chair and held a saucepan over the gas jet and boiled water for tea. They even boiled eggs. The girls had to wear their hair up to make them look older. But Mabel's hair was lovely, dark gold, the colour of ripe corn. And she was allowed to wear it hanging down her back, tied in a ribbon. And so she would model the hats. But this drew much too much attention. And the milliner had her moved to Born and Hollingsworth on Oxford Street. Emmanuel travelled through spheres and spheres, each sphere a different shade of luminosity. No past, no present, no time, no future, no space. Only infinite state, eternal state. Forever changing, infinite state, infinitely present. 